The science of selling has become more important than the art. That's the thesis of my next guest, Byron Matthews from Miller Hyman Group. Miller Hyman takes global research into sales techniques and performance and develops the best practices to make sales teams more effective and efficient. Byron, you've identified four key trends that are making selling harder for businesses. Yeah, number one, digital disruption. We understand that, we all feel that, but in the world of selling, the amount of technology and tools and data that buyers have is really causing a lot of problems and issues for sellers. Number two, urbanization, specifically in emerging economies. There are 65 million more people every single year living in cities. That might seem great, you know, a bunch of people in the same place, let's sell, but the problem is that brings in new competition, tons of price pressures, and a lot of difficulties in trying to figure out how to break through some of these markets. Number three, the productivity in the aging workforce. GDP by math is productivity plus labor growth. So if you have lower labor growth, that puts more pressure on productivity, which puts more pressure on selling organizations. And then finally, we think about this idea of you just kind of compete in your sector. That's all gonna get blurred. Primarily through technology, platforms will integrate industries together into sort of an interconnected ecosystem, which will provide a ton of challenges for sellers. It's not as simple anymore. What evidence is there of the impact of these trends? So we do a lot of research around the world of sales and performance, and by the numbers across the board, they're down. Let me give you a good example. The percent of reps that make quota, in 2017, we study this all industries, all regions, and it's at a five-year low. 53% of reps make quota. Now you might say that's horrible. Well, you want about two-thirds of your reps to make quota, but 53%, that gap is huge. How can sales organizations adapt to overcome these challenges? Yeah, we actually think there's a few things that all selling organizations need to be investing in. Number one, selling models have changed. So historically, you know, started with product selling, then it moved to solution selling. That means you show up, you ask really good questions, you understand their needs, and then you provide them a solution. That's been the predominant model for decades. It's actually not good enough anymore. Buyers are well informed to go back to digital disruption. They've got tons of information. Now you have to change the game. You have to add value in the sales process. You gotta provide insights, you gotta provide data. That shift in selling model, very difficult to do, but the ones that are doing it are succeeding. Number two, sales enablement as a function. Organizations are starting up sales enablement to create value engineers, to power change in the organization. Number three, talent. Really forward-thinking selling organizations are thinking about their talent. What does that next generation talent look like? Big difference between EQ and IQ. With more science in selling, the IQ part of a professional's traits becoming more important. And finally, and probably the most important, is process maturity. It used to be the differentiator if you had a methodology. Your way of selling had everyone operating together. Now that's a circuit breaker. You have to have that. And then from there you could invest in capabilities. Miller Hyman Group is also having to deal with these challenges. How are you adapting? Our legacy was all based on training and methodology and skill programs. That's only part of the equation now. So we've had to invest in capabilities around services and consulting, capabilities around talent management and really helping organizations think about their people, capabilities around technology, CRM tool. Selling organizations are embracing data-rich, insight-rich environments. Imagine if you captured all of the data every time they went out to win more deals. And then that data was smart enough to provide insights to that individual. It said, hey, the last two times you won, these were the things that you did. And then it would tell your supervisor, your frontline sales leader, hey, in your forecast, when you're working with Byron, think about this, he wins more when he develops a coach. That type of competitive advantage is necessary going forward, and that's exactly what we're delivering. So in this environment and with these new tools, what is the talent profile of a successful salesperson today? We're absolutely seeing a shift. We actually bought a company from IBM called Talent Analytics, and it, had, it came with all this massive amounts of assessment data. And what we're seeing is a shift from, if you just at the highest level, think about EQ and IQ, which are both important in a seller. But the predominant trait was more on kind of the EQ, the persuasive traits. We see that shifting more into analytical traits in the IQ part. Doesn't mean the EQ is not important. And think about that comment I made earlier around digital disruption and data everywhere and the science of selling. To become a value engineer, to, to show up and not just ask good questions, but to provide insights and data and analytics, those type of traits are gonna be really important in the future. Byron, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for watching. You can read the research that informed this video at csoinsights.com and learn even more at millerhymangroup.com. And please subscribe for the latest business, finance, and strategic insights that are transforming Europe from europeanceo.com.